In this video, we're going to go over the Lab 11 Individual Data Sheet Analysis. So, I have the worksheet pulled up here on my left, and I have just one of the sheets open right now. I actually have all three. I'm not going to display all three at once. Um, so I have just, one of you might actually have this. One of you in each section might actually have these three. Uh, so you can literally follow along. You should be able to get the exact same things. I'm not sure how they're going to all be sent out, um, whether you'll get just sort of a run like this, where we have our normal, m normal, m fast, and m slow, metronomic slow, metronomic normal, metronomic fast. Um, but those are the three that I have pulled up, and if you have those, you can basically just follow along. Um, if you don't, you'll have to do it, you know, interpret you know, just transpose pretty much the exact same way. Um, and then I also have the individual data sheet analysis pulled up. So we have this broken down in different blocks. M fast, M norm, M slow, U fast, U norm, U slow. So our unconstrained walking and our metronomic walking. And then we have our experimental error. Then we have our subjects all here. So once we get all the data, we'll be able to cut uh, your data that you from the three sheets you analyze, you can copy and paste them on in here under the correct heading, of course. So let's go ahead and um, do a couple things. So there's no text units or anything like that header to this, a header that indicates what it is. This is time, and it's in seconds for each, the time between each stride. So the contact with the foot to the next contact with the foot. This data was cleaned um, and uh, filtered and the calculation was already done for us to get that time between strides for us. So since my data is like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as something separate. Let's just call it, um, since I have all metronomic, I'm just going to call it metronomic metronomic cool all right and what I'm going to do is let's see this one was the slow okay should have done this before, but M slow. Actually, I'm going to put SI01 dot M slow. That's just an indicator of which one's which. I'm actually, since I had the slow over here, um, I'm going to put the normal. Let's highlight all of that. Copy and paste on in here. This is SI01.M norm, keeping the same sort of designations. And then we have our last one. This is the M fast. SI01.M uh, fast. Cool, we got all of our three trials here. Now, I'm, since I already have this pulled up, I'm just going to copy and paste this on in. Since I have M fast, M norm, M slow, I'm just going to be using these. So I'm just going to copy them on in to here to help keep, keep things uh, separate, separated nice and easily. You don't have to do this, but it's going to at least look nice and make it easier for me to copy later. And then our subject SI01. Indicator, reminder of which one I have, and if you have multiple subjects, then you ha can put which one, and if you only had one of these or some mixture of, you can at least keep them separate, make it a little bit easier for yourself later. Okay, so the mean stride rate variability time, that's just the mean time of that entire interval. So this entire interval, this entire interval, and that entire interval. 
Let's go ahead and do that. The average. Okay, good. I did get everything there. Then we'll do average. This is not set up that we can just drag across, so make sure you don't do that. It'll give you a error. Well, not really an error. It'll start taking into account cells that don't make sense, though. Uh, and it will give you, for the Shannon entropy, some division by zero and some weird stuff. So, yeah. So these are our mean stride rate variability times. Good. Um, we'll use these on here once we get the full class data. We're going to figure out what the average for each um, condition was. And then we're going to do the standard deviation as well, and we're going to calculate one thing called the coefficient of variation, um, CV coefficient of variation. But we'll get there once we get to the class data. Now we got the Shannon entropy, which we did last week, and we got our thing to, from Lab 11 to calculate on in here. Um, if you wanted to use previous weeks, you can. It's the same thing, but you just have to make sure to highlight the correct range. So there we go. And luckily, last week's we were using 29,000 data points, 29,900, and this week we're going to be using like 2,000 or so. So computers should be able to handle this just fine if you're having some issues last week with getting locked up and see it automatically calculate it for me. I didn't have to do anything bizarre or anything like that. And same thing, we cannot just drag across or anything. So we'll have to do this again. Range for the no M normal. Okay, there we go. Just kept hitting that uh, comma in there. And our last one. Not that. There we go. And this has to be perfect if um, you highlighted like one cell down on accident or something like that. It would give you division by zero. So I'll demonstrate that here real quick. Let's just change this to 10. We're going to include one blank space. You don't have to do this, I'm just showing you. It'll give you division by zero since you have a blank cell, so let's just undo that. All right, so all of mine line up perfectly. So I can just go ahead and copy and paste these on in here. Subject one, we have our M fast, M norm, and M slow. Cool. Um, we won't be able to do that experimental error on this, we'll have to do it in the class data, so don't worry about it now. Um, so, other other than that, um, this is pretty much everything that we need to do for the um, for the individual data analysis. It's the same thing three times. We're just getting a couple pieces of information. Once we hit the class data, that's where it's going to get a little bit more complicated. And again, you can see, you can kind of tell because there is no individual data questions here. Um, it's all about the class data, all about the group data that we'll have. So, if you do have any questions though, please feel free to contact your lab instructor. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.